Hello, good morning, everyone, or good afternoon, depending on which time zone you are. I hope you can hear me well. Uh, I'm going to present uh, the joint work with Paloma Lima, Vinicius Dos Santos, and Everton Sosa. And it's about reducing gas transversals via edge contraction. So this is the plan of the talk. I will introduce the problem I will be talking about. I will present our results. Depending on time, I'd like to show you some of the proofs, and I will conclude with some open problems. Let's get started. So our work uh, places itself in the huge area of graph modification problems. So here, the most general setting is the following. Uh, take your favorite graph class C, and let M be a set of allowed graph modification operations. That's a vertex deletion, edge deletion, edge contraction, whatever. And the problem is formulated as follows. So when you are given a graph, integer k, and the, object, the question is whether g can be transformed to a graph in your favorite class, in the target class C, by applying operations at most k operations from the allowed set M. Okay. So as you can imagine, this problem has a huge expressive power. So we consider a particular case of it. Namely, we consider the case that is commonly known in literature as blocker problems. Okay. So here, the setting is the following. So let pi be your favorite graph parameter, for instance, the domination number of a graph or the size of a long span. And as before, let M be a set of allowed modification operations. And the problem is formulated as follows. We are given a graph G and two integers, K and D. And now what we want is to transform the input graph D to a graph G prime, again, only uh, using at most K operation from the allowed set M. But now what we want is that, that the parameter pi has dropped by at least D by these operations. So namely, we want to obtain a graph G prime whose value of the parameter is at most the value of the parameter for G minus D. Okay? So for instance, uh, let's consider the case where M just contains the vertex deletion operation. And let's consider pi to be the length of a short, short of a longest path or cycle. Okay? And consider D equal one. So in this case, the problem is exactly what is known as the transversal of longest path of cycles because we just want to decrease the value of the longest path of the length of the longest path by one by deleting a minimum number of vertices. So this is a problem that has been widely studied in the literature in a series of articles. There are many cases that can be considered. So take pi to be either the chromatic, the independent, the click, the matching, or the domination number. And in the last years, there has been a lot of work uh, studying this, this kind of problem. Okay? So we consider an even more restrictive case in which the loud set of operations M just contains the edge contraction. Okay? So we are only allowed to do edge contractions. So in this case, we call the problem contraction to contraction of pi. And again, we're given two integers. And so just for the remainder of the talk, uh, keep k associated with contractions is the number of contractions that we're allowed to do. And d associated with drop is how much do we want the parameter to drop, OK? So we're given a graph g, two integers k and d, and we want to apply at most k edge contractions to obtain a graph g prime in which the parameter has dropped by at least d, OK? So contracting k edges to drop the parameter by at least d, OK? So even for this particular case, there have been several articles studying it. So in a series of recent work, uh, several authors have studied the cases where this pi is the chromatic, the independent, the click, and the domination now, OK? And uh, in this work, most of the effort has focused on studying the, the complexity of this problem from the point of view of graph classes. So namely, obtaining graph classes for which the problem is polynomial time solvable and ones for which is, it is empty hard. These are results that I want to mention here from Galvi, uh, Lima, and Rice from last year, from last M MFCS, in fact, that says the following. Let pi be a parameter such that it is empty hard to compute it in a graph, like most of the ones we can imagine, and such that when we contract one edge, we can drop, make it drop by at most one. Okay? Then they proved that unless p equal in p, uh, there exists no polytime algorithm for deciding whether one given edge decreases the p number, the pi number of a graph. Okay? So note that this is not the same problem as this one. They proved that if if we are given an edge, deciding if the contraction of this edge drops the value of the parameter cannot result in polynomial. So what do we do? In fact, we study even a more particular case than the general problem, and we focus on what we call graph transversal. 
So let me provide some definitions before we I show you what, what we proved. So I denote by with this this symbol a fixed graph containing relation. Okay. So I will call it a relation. And I will consider the subgraph, the induced subgraph, the minor, and the topological minor relations. I will not define them here. I assume you are familiar with them. Okay. And uh, I, I will denote by calligraphic H a fixed graph collections, graph collection that can be finite or infinite. Okay. I, I don't restrict these collections to be finite. Okay. And for graph G, I denote by tau of H and this relation. The transversal number according to this graph class and this relation that is the minimum size of sets of vertices that hits all the occurrences of the graph in this collection according to this relation okay so this parameter is the minimum number of vertices such that when when removed from the graph the remaining graph does not contain any of the graphs in h according to this relation okay so this is the commonly known transversal numbers so let's see some examples to see that even this particular case has a huge expressive power. Well, huge, uh, relevant expressive power, let's say. So for instance, consider the relation to be the subgraph relation and H to just contain one edge. So what do we want here? We want to hit all edges by removing vertices. So then this parameter is exactly the vertex cover number of a graph. Okay. If we still consider the subgraph relation, and we want to hit all cycles by removing vertices, then this parameter is exactly the size of a minimum feedback vertex cycle. Another example, if we still stick to the subgraph relation and we consider H to contain all odd cycles, then this parameter is the odd cycle transversal. Of a graph. So it is easy to check that these three parameters satisfy the conditions of the previous theorem, namely that uh, they can decrease the contractions of, a, of an edge can decrease each of these three parameters by almost one, and also they are empty hard in general graphs. So by the previous result, let me go to the previous slide quickly. By the previous result, uh, we have automatically that even if we are given an edge, deciding whether we can drop the vertex cover, the vert a feedback vertex set, or the odd cycle transversal number of a graph by at least one is empty hard. It is not cannot be solved in point unless we go. Okay, so what do we prove? Uh, our first result is the following. So consider H to be any collections of graphs that contains two connected graphs. So all the graphs in the, in the collection should be two vertex connected, and it contains at least one graph that is not a clique. Okay, then we prove and, and let the relation be any of these four relations I mentioned subgraph, induced subgraph, minor, or topological minor. Then we prove. That the, the problem, the contraction pi problem, is co empty hard even for fixed k and d equal to one. Okay? So even if we are only allowed to make one contraction and we want the parameter to drop by a one, it is empty hard for any co empty hard for any collection containing two, con two connected graphs such that at least one of them is not a thing. Okay? So this in particular, so the following. But for feedback vertex sec, the collection is a collection of cycles, so they are two connected, and many of them are not clicks. Similarly, for odd cycle transversal, the collection is odd cycles, so they are two connected, and all of them are not clicks. So we have that the, the problems of dropping the feedback vertex set and the odd cycle transversal by at least one by one contraction, so k equal d equal one, is going to be hard. Okay. So what, what about the remaining cases? So which cases are not covered here? So for instance, if this collection contains only clicks, we cannot apply this result. So we prove that uh, if H is a collection of clicks, each of them having at least three vertices, and you will see later why this is important. And for the relations of minor and topological minor, then we prove the same thing, that contraction, the contraction problem is going to be hard for fixed K equal D equal one. So now we covered uh, two connected graphs, we covered clicks. So the graphs that are not covered by this result, neither by this one, are, for instance, paths. Okay? Paths are not two connected and are not clicks, so except P2. So what did we prove? We proved that let H be a path with at least four vertices, and let calligraphic H contain this path and then any collection of two connected graphs, and let uh, the relation be any of these four 
relations that we consider. Then we prove the same thing. Even that the contraction problem is going to be hard for fixed k equal d equal one. Sorry for this noise. I hope you can still hear hear me. Say something. Someone is cutting the grass here. I hope you can still hear me. I'll try to speak loudly. Okay. So this is on the on the negative side. So as uh, let's see what we prove on the positive side. So we we had as a corollary that the contraction for fixed vertex set, which is the previous slide, and outside the transversal are going to be hard for fixed k equal d equal one. So the natural question is whether uh, is this problem always hard for natural parameters pi? And on the positive side, we prove the following. We prove that for the vertex cover problem, the situation changes completely. We prove that the problem can be solved in this time. Some function of d times n to the power 2d, or some function s that we will see later. Okay, so in particular, for every fixed d, we have a polynomial time algorithm for any k. So this is in sharp contrast with the feedback vertex set and all cycle transversion uh, cases that are hard even for fixed k equal d equal one. For the vertex cover, we prove that for every fixed d, the problem can be solved in polynomial time. Okay? So this is our main result that it exhibits a sharp difference uh, between the feedback vertex set and all cycle transversal and vertex cover. Okay? And uh, this is also interesting because uh, as we saw, the proposition that we saw from last NFCS from Galvi et al, show that we are given the edge to be contracted even for the vertex cover the problem is hard and we prove that if we have the freedom to choose the edge then the problem is can be solved in polynomial time so such an algorithm as you may know from the using terminology from parameterized complexity it, this result can be stated equivalently as uh, as an xp algorithm with parameter p and uh, as a byproduct of our proof we get the following corollary we have that if we want to stick to FPT algorithm, then we show that the problem can be too approximated, too approximated in terms of k, so in terms of the minimum value of k that achieves this dropping in, in FPT time. Okay? So if we relax the, the decision version to the approximated version, then we can get an FPT algorithm. And this follows from, from our proof. Okay? So using terminology from parameterized complexity, this uh, means that the problem can be too approximated in FPT with parameter P. Okay, so let me show you some of the proofs. I have uh, more than 10 minutes left, and I want to focus on the proof of the algorithm. I will not mention the NP hardness reductions here. I will just focus on the algorithm. Okay? The reductions are, are from uh, a restricted version of 3SAT, and you can find it in the proceedings. Okay? So let me focus on this. On the fact that the vertex cover problem, the contraction for vertex cover can be solved in such a running time. Okay. So just recall the problem for, for you not to get lost. So we want to drop the vertex cover of a graph by at least d by making at most k edge contractions. Okay. So before providing such an algorithm, let's check that the problem is at least MP hard. Okay. It may even polynomial, but it's not. Let me just check this. So, so we let me just show you that the problem is MP hard even if the vertex cover number of the graph is given with the input. Why? Because the particular case, if we take d equal to the vertex cover number minus one, then it means that we want to drop the vertex cover number to one. It means that if the input graph is connected, which are the graphs that have vertex cover one, and these are stars. Okay. So this problem is exactly star contraction. I, want, I have a graph and I want to contract it to star, okay. if we assume that the input graph is connected. It is known, it is not difficult to see, that the start contraction is equivalent to the connected vertex cover problem. And for connected vertex cover problem, there are a lot of hardness results. So for instance, it is known that this problem is NB hard on bivertex graphs in which vertex cover is polynomial. So in, even if the vertex cover number is given along with the input. Okay. So we have that this is NB hard. Okay, so let's focus on the, on the X. Let's, let's sketch how we, you, we obtain such an algorithm. The main idea, is the following insight that I will explain to you now, which is a polytime algorithm for k equal d equal one. And then we will say how, how we generalize it, okay? Which is the main idea here. Given a graph G, consider a minimum vertex cover X, okay? Here I highlighted consider because we don't need it for the proof. Just consider it for the analysis, okay? So here we have a picture that X, we have minimum vertex cover, so the complement is an independence. And the important observation is the following. If the input graph G is not bipartite, the graph induced by X 
needs to contain at least one edge. Okay, but then if we just contract this edge, then we obtain a graph in which the, this will be still a vertical cover of this graph of size one less. So contracting this edge will have dropped the vertex cover by at least one, in fact, by exactly one. So without knowing who is X and without knowing uh, what is this edge, we can directly answer that if G is not bipartite, we are dealing with a yes instance. Okay, this is the main observation that uh, constitutes a fundamental difference between vertex cover and the other parameter. Okay. And what happens if G is bipartite? Okay. Now G is bipartite, otherwise we can answer yes directly. And now we exploit that the vertex cover in bipartite graphs can be solved in polynomial time by conic sphere. Okay. So what do we do? We compute the vertex cover of, of the input graph in polynomial time because now we are in the bipartite case. And then for every edge, it is easy to see with a very simple branching algorithm that the vertex cover of the of G where we have contracted E, so this is I denoted by with this symbol, the contraction of E, can be also solved in polynomial time. Then we are done because we just have to check for every edge of G whether the vertex cover has dropped by contacting this edge. And that's it. So the algorithm is very simple. If the graph is not, we, we first check if the graph is bipartite or not. If it is not, we just answer yes. And if it is, we uh, solve the problem easily in polynomial time. Okay. So now let's see how we can generalize this idea to arbitrary values of, key, of k and b. And for this, we use the following notion. Let uh, bc of g, so this stands for bipartite contraction number. So bc of g is a minimum set of a set of edges whose contraction results in a bipartite graph. So is the mini, BC of G is the minimum number of edges that we have to contract in G to obtain a bipartite graph. Okay? So in other words, uh, well, in particular, BC of G is zero, even only if G is already bipartite. Okay? And we use the following results of Hegernes et al. from a few years ago that says that computing the value and deciding whether the bipartite contraction number of a, of a graph is at most K is FPT, parameterized by K. So we will use it as a black box in our algorithm. Okay, so let me sketch how the algorithm goes. The first, uh, uh, the first observation is that we may assume that k is at least d, because as I said, the contraction of an edge can decrease the vertex cover by at most one. So we can check whether this is at most d, otherwise we can conclude directly that we have a no instance. Okay, so now we have that k is at most d. The first thing we do is we check using the, this algorithm as a black box, whether the bipartite BC of our graph is at most D minus one, okay? In FPT time. We check this. And we distinguish two cases. The first case is if the vertex cover number is at least D, so if the answer to this question is negative, then we, what do we know? Let's mimic what we did in the previous slide. Consider, and again, we don't need to compute it, consider a minimum vertex cover X on my graph and focus on the graph induced by X. Then, since we know that the bipartite contraction number is at least D, this graph needs to contain at least the edges, because if it, since the complement of this graph is an independent set, it has no edges. So if this if this induced subgraph contains a signal less than the edges, then this, this will contradict that the, the BC of G is at least D. Okay, but now by the same argument, if in X we have at least the edges, we can just contract them and obtain a, a graph in which the vertex cover will have dropped by at least D. So here we can, similar as before, we can directly answer that we are dealing with a yes instance and we're done. Okay? Again, note that we don't need to compute the vertex cover. We just know if this number is at least D, we are dealing with a yes instance automatically. Okay? So now we can assume that the vertex cover number is at least D minus one. And what do we do now? We consider the connected components of, of our graph G and we distinguish two cases. The first case is assume that for every component, its vertex cover number that can be computed by an FPT algorithm is at most D. Okay, so we check by an FPT algorithm parameterized by D whether the vertex cover number of each component is at most D. Okay, so assume it's the case. Then it's easy to see that the tree width of the whole graph is bounded by a function of D. And then what we do that I will not explain in detail here is we show that we can solve the problem in FPT time by expressing it with an MSO formula, and then we use the Corsell theorem. And once we have the solution for every connected component, we can combine them using a simple dynamic programming algorithm. Okay? So I, I will not explain how do we do it here, but it's not complicated. It uses really standard techniques. 
uh, using MSO formula and dynamic products. Okay? So what case is left? The case that is left, that there exists at least one component C of, of G whose vertex cover number is at least D plus one. Okay? So let's focus on this case. What do we do here? We claim that our graph contains a vertex set of size at most 2D that drops the vertex cover by at, by at least D. Okay? And now we will see how we use it. Let's, let's prove this claim. Uh, we will see that the sufficient condition for this claim to hold is that for every H graph connected graph and every minimum vertex cover of this graph of size at least two, there exists two vertices in the vertex cover at distance at most two in H. Let's see why. So consider a graph G and a minimum vertex cover. So if the vertex cover contains some edge, then we just declare as U as V the endpoints of this edge, and they are at a distance at most one, so we are happy. So suppose that uh, here we have no edge, and consider the vertices in the independent set in the complement of the vertex cover. Okay. What will happen if all of them have degree one? Okay. Then if all of them have degree one, and here we don't have edges, our graph will be just a collection of the stars. Okay. But by assumption, our vertex cover has size at least two, and our graph is connected, so this cannot happen, okay? Because if we had at least two stars, then the graph will be disconnected. So necessarily, there exists one vertex here of degree at least two. And then we just take U and V to be two of its neighbors, and they are at distance at most two in G, in H, okay? So now in this case, we declare U and V to be uh, two such vertices, okay? And now what we do, why, why this, this fact implies the claim? Because then we just, a iterative contract these red edges, okay? And what, what does it give? It gives that by doing at most 2D contractions, we have dropped the vertex cover by at, most, by at least D, okay? Because if you contract these edges, it's like moving this vertex here on the, on the vertex cover, and we have decreased, we have identified these three vertices into one. So we have decreased the vertex cover size by one by doing two contractions. And here we have decreased it by one by doing one contraction. So we do, doing like this, what we obtain is a vertex set of size at most 2D that this vertex cover has dropped by. Okay? So now that we have it, uh, we, we can automatically say that if the vertex, if K is at most, is at least 2D, we can answer yes. Okay? Otherwise, we have that K is at least 2D minus 1. And what do we do here? We just enumerate all sets. We just enumerate all sets of vertices, of edges, of my graph of size at most 2D minus 1. And here it's important to note that this is the only step in our algorithm that takes x behind. And then what we do, then for each of them, we have to compute the vertex cover number of G contracted this in f bt time, okay? Let me just sketch very briefly how, how do we do it. What we do is we find a vertex set of linear size in D whose removal from this graph results in a bipartite graph. And once we have it, we're done, because then we can branch on every vertex in this set, whether we take it or not, and then once we are left with a bipartite graph, then we, we apply a polytime algorithm, okay? So to obtain such a set, recall that we're in the case where the vertex DC of, of G is at most D minus one. And then it's easy to check that we can set this, this vertex to be the endpoints of the edges to be contracted together with the endpoints of the, of the set F that we are dealing. And removing this, it's easy to check that it is a bipartite graph, okay? And then as before, we just check that if some of these choices the vertex cover numbers has dropped or not. If for, for one of them we have a yes answer, we answer yes. If for none of them we, we have a yes answer, we answer no. Okay, so this is the outcome. Let me conclude with some open questions. So this is the hardness result that we proved. Uh, for all these cases, we proved that the problem is going to be hard for fixed K and D equal one. So which cases are open? So we proved it for paths with at least four vertices. So what remains open is paths well, and we prove it the, the, it's polynomial for, for vertex cover, that is when H contains just one edge, K2, or, or P2, okay, the path of two vertices. So concerning clicks, what remains open is when H contains click with at least three vertices for the induced relation, induced subgraph or subgraph relation. For path with, a, with exactly three vertices, it's open. We know that for two vertices, the vertex cover is, is, is polynomial, and with at least four vertices, it's going to be hard. So for three, we don't know. For arbitrary three, we still don't know. We think that there will be cases that are hard and cases that will be easy. So establishing this dichotomy will be interesting. And if H contains this connected graph, this 
seems to be tricky. We have not studied this problem. So we've showed such an algorithm for contraction of for vertex cover for K2. So the natural question is, is the problem FPT or the value one hard? We just know that it is XP, but we don't know whether it is FPT or the value one hard. We think that it is FPT, and we have, uh, as I mentioned, an FPT2 approximation, but we don't know whether it is the value one hard. And the last thing that, uh, that I want to mention here is that for the cases that are hard, I think that it's natural to parameterize this problem by the value of the parameter. Okay. So I will skip this here, but there are cases that are easily seen to be FPT. And, uh, but for collections that um, contain no, no planar graph, I think it's interesting to look at this collection. And that's all, thank you for your attention.